So far, we've solved quite a few first-order differential equations by actually writing down a formula for the solution. Um, so today, we're actually going to see another way to think about the solutions of first-order differential equations without having to write down an explicit formula. And that's with the direction field. Um, so a direction field um, or slope field is a visual representation of a first order differential equation. Okay, so I'll say exactly what that is in a second, but the idea is if we have a differential equation that looks like this, so dy dx equals some function of x and y, uh, we can associate to that differential equation a slope field. Okay, um, so how exactly do we do this? Um, well, so we have the xy plane, and basically to every point, um, let's say the coordinates are x0 comma y0. So to every point in the plane, okay, uh, we associate a line segment. So we associate a line segment with a, a particular slope. Uh, and that slope is actually going to be given by this function right here. So we're associating a line segment with slope given by um, the right-hand side of the differential equation. So given by f of x0 comma y0. And that's what a direction field is, or a slope field. Uh, the best way to understand this is to, to look at a few examples. So let's look at uh, close example one. Um, so suppose we have this differential equation, uh, dy dx equals, um, let's do x minus y. So this right here is going to be my capital F of x comma y. Okay, and what I'd like to do is uh, create a direction field for this differential equation. So I'm going to draw some uh, coordinate axes here. And so we'll have, as usual, the x-axis and the y-axis. And um, what we're going to do is at every point, so for example, um, let's take uh, let's take this one right here. So this is three comma two. And at that point, we're going to actually draw in a line segment. And that line segment is going to have the slope given by, f of 3 comma 2. So the slope is going to be f of uh, 3 comma 2. Um, but what is that? That's just 3 minus 2, which is 1. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to put in a little line segment there with slope 1. So it's going to look like that. Okay. And we're actually going to do this to every single point in the plane. You might say, well, yeah, that's impossible. Uh, we can't do it for every point. Um, so in practice, what you do is you sort of choose a set of points where you're going to draw in the slopes. So here I'm just going to choose all the lattice points, all the points with integer coordinates. Um, so let's do a few more. So uh, what about 1, 1? This one here, what, should, what slope should I put in? Well, it's going to be given by this this uh, this function here again. So I'm this uh, this equation. So I'm going to do um, one minus one, which is zero. So I need a slope of zero. 
and I'll keep doing this with, with every point in the plane. So for example, two comma two, two minus two is zero, so I need a slope of zero. And you might notice that you know every point along this, this line y equals x here is going to have a slope of zero. Zero, zero, zero. That's the sort of trick to fill in a lot of these quickly. Um, okay, what about this point here, zero comma one? I need to do zero minus one, which is minus one. So, so here I'm gonna have a slope of negative one. Okay. And here I'm gonna have a slope of negative two. So I'll draw that one a little steeper. Um, notice that this one here, I'm also gonna have a slope of minus one because the Y coordinate is one larger than the X coordinate. And I'm gonna start filling these in pretty quickly, kind of like I did with the others. So I'm just going to fill in some of these uh, slopes. You should try this too. Um, this one is going to be like this. Okay, so we kind of, we have a picture appearing here. And uh, what's this one going to be? Two minus zero, so that's a slope of two. All along this line here. And uh, let's fill in a few more. So it's going to be a little steeper. Great. Okay. So we, what we have here is the slope field associated with this differential equation. I'll draw a couple more. Okay. Um, so yeah, again, this is a visual representation of the differential equation and the amazing thing is we can actually visualize the solutions of this differential equation without even solving this differential equation. So I just want to point out this differential equation is not separable. Um, we can't separate variables because of the x minus y here. Um, so we don't know how to solve this one yet. We actually will learn how to solve this one soon enough because this is an example of something called a linear uh, first order differential equation. Um, but even so, so we'll actually see that a lot of differential equations you can write down just don't have a solution that, that you can express in terms of elementary functions. So, so there's no hope of solving a lot of differential equations you can write down, um, analytically at least. So what do you do in that case? Well, you don't give up. You look for another way to think about the problem. So this is, this is another way to think about this problem. Um, Let's think about what a solution is going to look like on this direction field, okay? So what does it mean to be a solution to this differential equation? Well, it means if you plug, if you plug it in, uh, then it satisfies this expression, right? So in other words, at any point, you know, x0 comma y0, let's say, if we plug this in, then the derivative of my solution curve at that point is going to be given by this expression. Okay. But what is a derivative really? This is nothing more than the slope of the tangent line. It's the slope of the tangent line to my solution curve, right? Let's, say, let's call it y of x. Okay, so what this is actually saying is that the slope of my tangent line at any point needs to be given by this formula. Okay, but that's what these green segments are. These are expressing you know, this formula at any point um, as the slope of the tangent line. So I need my slope of, uh, I, need to, I need to essentially draw in a curve here so that at any point, the slope of the tangent line is actually given by these green segments. So let me try that. So I'm, so I'm essentially going to follow along these green segments in the direction that they're indicating. So maybe, maybe one of them is going to sort of look like this. And ah, so when I get here, I actually need to be going more this way. So maybe, maybe one solution curve is going to look like that that I just drew in. Um, and maybe if I start down here, I'll have a solution curve that sort of looks like this. And you can try drawing in a few of these. So maybe I have one that's starting up here. Uh, this is telling me I actually need to sort of flatten out 
and I guess I'm also going to come up here. Yeah. Uh, so let's draw on a couple more. Again, you're sort of tracing along these green segments. Um, you might say, well, what, what do we do if there's no green segment, right? Like these aren't always going through the green segments. You can sort of infer what direction they're pointing. Um, and you can imagine, you know, if we did calculate a green segment here, what direction it would be, it would be pointing in. Um, okay, let's draw one more. Actually, there's a really interesting one, right? What if we just start along this, uh, this line here? We're just going to be staying along that line. So there's actually a linear solution here to this differential equation. And there are several nonlinear solutions. Um, right, so, so let me just uh, sum that up. So, so solution curves, um, <clears throat> solution curves, um, how do I say it? Uh, they, uh, they follow um, the direction Um, yeah, indicated by the green segments. <clears throat> by those little line segments, okay? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, okay, so, so this is really cool. We can actually visualize the solutions um, without um, doing any mathematics, uh, mathematical calculations, basically, um, because yeah, we're we're just looking at the differential equation. We haven't uh, solved this differential equation yet, um, but in a way, we sort of have solved it visually by by seeing exactly what these solutions are going to look like. Uh, so let me give you a problem. Um, let me write this like this. Um, yeah, there's a lot you can do with these direction fields. So, so let's actually suppose we have a solution to this differential equation. So suppose um, y of x is a solution, okay, to um, yeah, a solution to the differential equation above, okay, um, with uh, with y of zero equal to, let's say, 2. So we have a, a particular solution. Um, so our solution is going to pass through the point 0, comma 2. Okay. And what I want you to do is estimate, without solving the, di the differential equation, estimate the value of y of 100. Okay. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about this. Um, you're going to use this direction field. So Pause the video and then come back once you think you've solved it. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's answer this problem. Okay, so no calculation needed. Let's just look at the direction field. So here's um, I guess I should have put a scale on this graph, right? But it's, here's one, two, three, four, etc. One, two, three, four. Um, we can actually visualize this solution starting at zero comma two, right? So it starts here and it's going to follow these green line segments. So sort of this one I drew in here maybe. It's gonna follow these green line segments and notice it sort of gets stuck right here and this path right here. And this pattern is going to continue as we noted before. So our solution is going to asymptotically approach this line here. Um, yeah, this line here. What is that line? That line has a slope of one, and um, so it's going to be y equals uh, just x minus one, because it's uh, offset by, by, by one, negative one here. Okay, so let's, uh, let's make note of that. So um, our solution, y of, y of x, is, uh, is going to approach uh, the line y equals x minus 1 as um, as x gets larger. 
So what does that mean? So we can actually say what uh, y of 100 is going to be without, without solving the differential equation analytically. So y of 100 is you know, it's approximately going to be equal to 100 minus 1, which is 99. We could do that just by looking at this visual representation of the differential equation. Um, great. So, so, yeah, this is a really cool idea. So let's 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 do another example here. Um, draw another direction field. So dy dx. Uh, this time, let's do. Um, okay, uh, negative x over y. And we'll draw a direction field. Okay. Let's put in these axes here. So here's x, here's y. Uh, let's use green again for the the slopes. Um, okay. So let's just start by plugging in a few points. Uh, to get going. So um, what if we plug in uh, 1 comma 1? Then we're evaluating um, this expression at 1 comma 1. So we have negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. So we're going to be a slope of negative 1 there. And, you know, similarly at 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 4. Um, what if we're on the y-axis? Well, then our x-coordinate is 0. So we're just always going to have a slope of 0. Interesting. Um, what if we're on the x-axis? Right. Well, then our y-coordinate is zero. Um, that doesn't look good, right? Because this is going to be undefined. So let's come back to that. Uh, maybe it should be a vertical uh, vertical line, but, but yeah, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, okay. So let's do a few more points, and you should uh, you should try this uh, on your own as well. So if you'd like, you can pause the video. I'm going to start putting in a a lot of uh, points. So here we have, or putting in a lot of line, line segments. And then some going like this. At one comma two, um, we've got negative a half. So negative a half here, we have negative a third. So I'm just gonna start drawing in a lot of line segments. You can see sort of an interesting, interesting, uh, slope field appearing here. Okay, let's do some down here. Um, so here we have slope of one. Okay. Um, so, so you can kind of see that it's, it's, it's going around in a circle. Um, and maybe we can see now, um, oh, what's, what's going on down here, by the way? These are also flat. Okay, so just putting in a bunch of them. Um, okay, I think we can stop now. Um, we kind of get the idea. So, so maybe I do want to put in vertical ones here on the x-axis. So that looks like what I should be doing. I'm not sure what to put in at zero comma zero. That looks like a particularly bad point, right? Because I'm not sure what direction they should be pointing. Um, okay, let's trace a couple of solution curves. Um, so what if we start, let's say here, and we'll follow in the direction of these slopes. So maybe it looks something like this. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we're getting what look to be uh, circles. All right. Um, so by the way, these um, these curves um, that I that I draw on this picture, uh, they have a name. They're called integral curves. called integral curves because um, at any point we're sort of um, 
sort of integrating in order to get the curve. We, we, we want the curve to have a fixed derivative at, at any point. We're sort of saying what the derivative needs to be at every point. Um, but yeah, there are also the solution curves uh, to our differential equation. So notice in this example, we get circles. Um, what I'd like you to do now, so, so here's another problem, is, um, you know, we can actually solve this one analytically. So it's a separable differential equation. So use separation of variables, use separation of variables uh, to actually solve this one, to solve this differential equation. And, uh, and then confirm that uh, we get circles. So you should actually get the equation for a circle if you, if you try to solve this one. So we get circles as a solution, as a solutions, okay? All right, um, so hopefully you get the idea um, for you know, what a direction field is, um, how we can actually use them to picture the solutions. So again, you know, the solution curves are going to, uh, sometimes I like to picture it as you know, ocean currents something like that. So these are telling you which way the current is going and then the, I'm drawing in maybe the path of a boat right, in these ocean currents. Um, okay. So now what I want to do is, is um, talk about something called Euler's method. Uh, named after a mathematician Euler. So, uh, okay, Euler's method. And um, this is a method actually for finding an approximate solution to a differential equation. Okay, specifically to first order differential equations, that's what we're gonna work with. Um, but, uh, but this is actually not gonna be anything new, okay? So we, we already sort of talked about what Euler's method is, is doing is essentially just going to be um, trying to trace along the direction field to create the solution. But it's going to be doing it in a more systematic way. And uh, in fact, this is something that you can actually program into a computer if you want. Um, so the idea is that given, um, given a differential equation, so again, we, we, we only want to deal with differential equations in that same form where we can write it as dy dx equals some function of x and y. So, we could, so it's a first order equation and we can isolate the derivative like this. Um, let's also say we're, we're looking for a, a, a certain solution satisfying an initial condition. Um, y of x0 equals y0. So we have a, a differential equation and an initial condition. Remember what we call that, right? That's an initial value problem. Okay. Um, so let me just tell you the idea in words, and then we'll actually um, do, a, do a calculation. So the idea is that we're going to start at this point. So starting at um, x0 comma y0, we're just going to sort of follow the direction indicated by the direction field um, for a certain distance. So we're going to follow uh, the direction, okay, indicated by the slope field. And we're going to follow it for a certain uh, small fixed horizontal distance. So for a fixed um, horizontal distance, Um, and we'll call that delta x. So that'll be our fixed horizontal distance. Um, and uh, we'll arrive at a new point. So arriving at a new point. Uh, and we'll call that uh, x1 comma y1. And then we just continue from there. So we repeat the process. Um, again, we look at where the direction field is telling us to go from that new point. 
we go in that direction just along uh, you know in that direction along a, a line and then once we've traveled this fixed horizontal distance we stop we're at a new point and we continue so so let me just draw a picture of you know what's going on uh, okay so suppose our uh our first point is um say right here so here's x0 comma y0 and if we look at the direction field it's telling us to go that way let's say and so what we're going to do is we're going to um we're going to actually move in that direction for some fixed horizontal distance delta x okay now we'll end up at a new point and at that new point, we again look at a direction field. Maybe it's now telling us to go this way. So this new point, um, let's call it x1 comma y1. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to move in that direction. Again, for this fixed horizontal distance, delta x. And in practice, delta x is very, very small. Uh, so we basically get something that looks like a curve, even though it looks like we have a bunch of line segments here. Um, okay, and then maybe it's telling us to go this way, and we keep going, and you kind of get the idea. Um, okay, so again, this is my delta x. So this is x2 comma y2, x3 comma y3. And maybe it's telling us to go this way now, but yeah, you get the idea. <clears throat> okay. Um, so yeah, this is a this is an algorithm for finding a solution to a differential equation, an approximate solution at least. Um, and and the what's the output of this algorithm is a series it's a series of points. If you'd like, also the line segments connecting them. But yeah, we get uh, x zero y zero. So these are points on the approximate solution x one comma y one, etc. And uh, and another really important observation is is uh, the smaller we choose this step size uh, delta x, the closer the approximate solution is to the actual one. To the actual one. Okay, um, so, so we get the idea of Euler's method. Let's actually derive some formulas that we can use or that we could tell a computer um, uh, to, to, to use in order to calculate an approximate solution. So let's say we're given uh, all the points up to, um, so say, let's say we know what xi comma yi is and what we want to find is the next point x i plus one comma y i plus one, right? And so let me just draw a little picture here. So um, let's say we have, um, yeah, let's say we have x uh, i y i here, okay. And we want to get to the next point. And so what we do is we look at the slope um, given by the slope field, and we're going to go in this direction. Um, how far do we go in this direction? Well, what do we say? We said we're going to go until we get to a, a, a horizontal distance, um, delta x, okay? So delta x is something that we pick ahead of time. Hmm, that's not such a good uh, triangle. Let me try that again. Okay. Um, so this this side of the triangle down here that I'm drawing in, that's going to have a length delta x. Okay, and once we once we've moved that length delta x, we've reached a new point. We'll call it x uh, i plus one comma y i plus one. That's our new point. Okay, um, so I think it's pretty clear what x i plus one has to be. Um, we're just looking at the x-coordinates, right? So to get the new x-coordinate, all you do is you take the previous one and you add this delta x. Great. Um, 
Okay, but we want the y coordinate also. So what is the y coordinate going to be? Well, it's going to depend on this slope here, right? So what is that slope there? The slope of this line is uh, it's going to be the slope of this little line segment here. And remember, how do we calculate this in a direction field? Well, what we do is we take our uh, the right side of our differential equation and we evaluate it at the point. Right, so this slope here is going to be F, capital F of xi comma yi. We take the point that we're on and evaluate this function here, whatever it is, right? And that's going to be the slope that this green segment is telling us to go in. Great, and, and so at the same time, uh, if we take this divided by delta x, we should get the slope. And so this length right here it's just going to be uh, delta x times the, uh, the slope. So delta x times f of xi comma yi. And so that's telling us, you know, if we want the next y coordinate from the previous one. So we take the previous one, yi, and we're going to add this uh, distance here. So we're going to add delta x times this capital F of xi yi. So this is going to involve the differential equation. I'm going to plug in some numbers to the differential equation. And these are the formulas for Euler's method. And you can just tell a computer to do these formulas if you want. And that's actually what computers do. They do either Euler's method or something similar in order to get those nice pictures of, uh, of solutions to differential equations. You know, even if it's not one that you can solve um, analytically, you might not even be able to write down a solution. But you can still get a really nice picture of the solution by, by using an approximate uh, method, like Euler's method. And uh, and yeah, so in practice, you, you have computers do calculations like this. Um, but just, you know, just to reinforce the method, I, I want to do an example um, where we'll actually, we'll actually calculate it ourselves. Um, so let's say we're given the initial value problem. So given the um, initial value problem, um, let's say dy dx equals y minus 2x. So there's our differential equation, but uh, I need to tell you something else. I need to tell you an initial condition. So we'll do y of 0 equals 1. Okay. Um, what I want to do is estimate the value of, let's say, y of 2. Okay. Um, using Euler's method. Um, and let's, let's say a step size. So with a step size, the delta x of, um, what we'll do is uh, 0 0.5. Uh, with, with a computer, you, you can do a much, much smaller step size and do many, many more steps, and you'll get a much more accurate um, value for y of 2. But just because we're going to do this by hand, and we don't want it to get too crazy, um, we're going to pick a fairly large step size. And so let's first figure out just how many steps we're going to need to do. All right. Well, uh, look at our x-coordinate, right? It's going from 0 to 2. And we're, we're just going steps of 0 0.5. So how many steps are we going to need? Well, it'll be 2 minus 0. That's the length of the interval that we're going along, the horizontal interval. Um, divided by the step size is going to be 4. So we're going to need to do 4 steps. Okay. So let's see how that works. Um, yeah, let me just move this up a little bit. Okay, uh, step one. Okay, well, what, what do we know here? We know what x0 and y0 are, right? So x0 is, um, is 0, and y0 is 1. That's just the initial condition. Okay, so in step one, we'll calculate what x1 and y1 have to be. 
And x, the x values are always easy, right? We just take the previous x value and we're going to add the step size. Right, so this is x0 plus the step size. And uh, what do we get? We get uh, 0 0.5. Right, so I'm just using this formula. And for the y values, we'll, we'll use this formula. Okay, so let me actually move it up like this. Um, We'll use this formula here. So we take, let me actually write down that formula. So we do y0 plus the step size times f, capital F, um, evaluated at the previous point, right? xi comma yi, right? So what is that going to be? Um, and remember, this is f, right? So this is capital F of X comma Y. Okay, so uh, Y zero is one, Let's push this back up, uh, plus 0 0.5 is the step size times, and now we're just gonna evaluate this function here. So we'd have to do Y minus two X uh, with these values. Okay, so we're gonna do one minus two times zero. And so we just got one in here and uh, for the final answer, we're going to get 1.5. So that's our new Y value. Okay. Step two. Okay, um, we're going to calculate X2 and Y2. X2 is easy. You just add the step size and we get one. What about y2? Well, we take the previous y value, y1. Let me write out the formula one more time, just while we're getting used to this. Um, and then we evaluate, we do a delta x times f evaluated at the previous uh, x and y values. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put in 1.5 this time. Um, plus delta x times, now I'm going to evaluate this function here again. Um, and I need to do y minus 2 times x. x is this, right? It's a pre you always use the previous uh, x and y values. Okay. Uh, so what do you have here? 1.5 minus uh, 1. So that's 0 0.5. 0 0.25, I think we're going to get 1.75 for our new y value. Okay, so the y values seem to be increasing. Our function seems to be increasing. Uh, step three. Maybe I'll do one more step, and then you can try the last step um, on your own. I'll tell you what the, the final answer is. But um, Okay, x3, we take the previous x value, we add the step size, and um, we'll try to do this one a little quicker. So, uh, what is y three? Well, we take the pre, we do y two, the previous one, one point seven five, plus the step size times our function evaluated at the previous y and x values. So, we're going to do um, one point seven five, the y value, minus two times the previous x value, two times one. And what is that going to equal? Um, 1.75 minus 2. This is, um, this is negative now. It's interesting. It's negative 0 0.25. Um, so we get negative uh, 0 0.125. And then we're going to subtract that from 1.75. So we actually get 1.625. That's kind of interesting. So our function is actually starting to decrease now. And um, now step 4 like you to try step four. So, um, so yeah, let me just say uh, you try it. So pause the video for a second, see what numbers you get for x4 and y4, and then I'll tell you what, what I got for them. Okay, so, so I think we get x4 is 2 and y4, which 
0 0.9375. And so what does that tell us? Well, we're looking for a value of y of 2, right? So when x equals 2. So we sort of stepped all the way over until we got to x equals 2, right? And what's our y value? Our y value is 0 0.9375. Um, so y of 2 is approximately 0 0.9375. Great, okay, so that is Euler's method. And again, it's based on the idea of direction fields. Direction fields are really important and we're actually going to make reference to them a lot um, in, in uh, future lectures. So that'll be it for today's lecture.